This picture of St. Francis is sort of a companion photo to the picture I put up on March 19th, which was called Bronze Man. This particular statue, I've seen this, I don't know, dozens of times in my life. Uh, it's about two feet tall, and it's outside a Catholic church near my son's daycare. I thought, uh, every time I see it, I think, ah, that might make a cool photo, but I never really knew what to do with this statue. It almost seemed like a cop-out. Oh, go and take a photo of a statue on the ground. Like, no one's ever done that before. Um, and so I, I always thought in my mind, uh, in the back of my mind, like, well, maybe someday I'll, I'll see what I can do with that, that uh, statue. Maybe get a photo out of it. Well, the morning I took this picture, it was rainy, kind of overcast, and the missing piece finally hit me, which was lighting. It finally made sense why it never seemed like a, a really good photo opportunity before. Uh, normal daylight makes this shadow too harsh, and there's too many there's too many uh, dark, contrasty shadows all over. And the instead of a, a sort of a grayed look, it, it's almost harsh white, and uh, it, it just didn't really work in broad daylight. Well, when it's cloudy and overcast, the clouds diffuse the light, and you get this this um, uh, instead of a, a single directional source of light coming from the sun, you get this diffused light that seems to come from all around from the clouds. And so it made it uh, ideal, I guess, maybe not perfectly ideal, but it was a great lighting opportunity for this particular uh, statue to be photographed. So I dropped off my sun and I grabbed my camera and uh, which was in my in my uh, bag that I take to work. And I went over and took this photo. I got down on my knees and I took a total of three actual pictures. The first two were a little too tight. I was too close. So I, I had to scoot back. Uh, they were cut off sort of at that that uh, fold in the clothes uh, right across the middle of his chest. Um, so I scooted back and took a third one where it, it is as you see it. It had his hands near the bottom of the photo holding the bird and left a little room up on top of the photo, uh, which I, I try to avoid normally, but I kind of like it, uh, leaving a little bit of space between the top of his head and the top of the photo. This picture is not cropped at all. And I, I toyed around a little bit in post with, do I crop it? Do I maybe get a little bit tighter on him uh, on the statue? And I decided, no, I'm going to leave it exactly as it was in camera. I'm really happy with the framing, and I think it works well to have the statue on the side, but he's looking towards the center. And that's one thing as you, uh, as you work with um, composition and framing and, and uh, all the elements of taking a photo. Where do you want your subject, and what do you want your subject to be directing your eyes toward in the photo? And sometimes we, we have a tendency to put our subjects right in the center of the photo, and maybe they're looking off to the side, and it, it looks okay. Uh, and certainly there's uh, um, master photographers and, uh, and uh, other uh, portrait artists can do this just fine. Like the Mona Lisa is pretty well centered in the frame, and no one's going to say Da Vinci doesn't know what he's doing when it comes to portraits. But if you're working with a wider canvas uh, like the, that on a picture where you've got a piece of film that's much wider than it is tall, it's uh, sometimes a good idea to put your subject off to the side, maybe along one of those rule of third lines, but – don't always go strictly by that. Anyway, I'm getting kind of off topic here. Uh, for the exposure, uh, there's sort of an even exposure for the whole photo, thanks again to the cloudy skies. If it's a really bright day, maybe the uh, statue would be uh, – you'd be exposing for the statue, but then the rest of it would be kind of blown out. And so the fact that it was overcast made it uh, awesome lighting for this photo. And overcast generally works well for most photos. Um there's a there's a green tree on the right hand side which sort of helps to balance things out a little bit. I shot this at f two eight and I didn't actually look at the camera after I took it to check it to see if I like the background blur or not. And honestly, I think I'm getting kind of a feel for what different apertures will do given a different di di given a specific distance from the subject. I still have a long ways to go, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. And so when I went out, I shot at f two eight knowing kind of what the finished product would look like in my mind. And I didn't really feel like I needed to be checking the back of my camera a lot. This is actually something I'm trying to do a lot less nowadays is peek at the back of my camera so much. I've disabled the auto preview where uh, you take a picture and it immediately shows you what that picture looks like. And I'm learning to trust my instincts a little more and just take photos and not necessarily worry about whether it's like the perfect photo or not, but just to sort of go with what I know. I think this has helped keep me in the moment, this idea of not necessarily striving for perfection. It also keeps me on my toes. 
uh, because I'm more concerned with seeking photo opportunities than constantly checking my camera to see if I've actually taken the perfect photo.